Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today, as requested, I am doing a A-level advice video on English literature A-level. You guys know that I got two A stars and an A. My A was in English literature and the reason why I have my friend with me here today is because I personally feel like I don't remember that much about A-level <laughs> English and it was definitely my hardest A-level uh, to do. So I have with me my beautiful college peer. Sean. Hello. Yeah, I'm Sean. I study English at Cambridge with Ibs. Studied English Literature and English Language A-Level. Got um, four A-stars. Bang, bang. Yeah. What bang. other A-Levels did you do? English Language, English Literature? Yeah, Psychology and um, Biology. Psychology and Biology, yeah. four A-stars. Can we just, can we just take a moment <laughs> to appreciate that you are here <laughs> in this channel? So what we're going to do first is we're going to talk about our own individual experience of what it was like to do A-Level English Literature and then we're going to answer some questions that we've asked you guys on Snapchat. We have gotten hundreds, so I, I apologise if we can't answer all of them but we're going to try our best. Doing English Literature, I got a B at GCSE <laughs> because all I spoke about was Curly's wife having a red <laughs> dress and literally that was it, B. When I did it at AES, I found that out of all the A-levels, the jump of English mm. is so... What do you think of that? I think it is quite a big jump, mainly just because you need to know a lot more about how texts are structured, techniques that the authors use, and if you can't really just say the symbolism means yeah, this. Yeah, you can't just say the it, imagery. It what becomes a lot more complex. First year, I got a a B in AS. I got a C in my English exam and I got a B in my coursework. So that averaged out to a B overall. Mm. And then for A2, what I did was is I retook my coursework, then I did the exam for A2 and the coursework for A2. Yeah. And then I got A star, oh, full marks in the English coursework. Mm. Oh my god, I just realised I got four. I'm alright! I'm alright! Like I definitely at A2 worked a lot more harder. Mm. Like the topics as well were a lot more interesting. Yeah. We did Love Through the Ages. It was, it was amazing. That's really different to what we did. It was, I was AQA A. Yeah, we were AQA B. Boy. Mm. B. I had an amazing teacher. Shout out to Jessica if you've watched this. In my first year when I did AS, I did get an A. We did um, aspects of narratives. I got an A of GCSE, so I didn't get an A star. Mm. But I went from that to go and get full marks in wow. all of my AS oh, modules. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah. That is amazing. A2 was much more difficult and I did a lot of practice essays at first mm -hmm. and I could never get the band six marks, which is like the A star. Was so there anything that you found extremely difficult? You have to know the text off by heart so you couldn't take your book into the exam. Yeah, closed text, yeah. Closed text exam. But I think even at AS, knowing the text really well, so you don't have to keep like flicking through to to find like a specific quotation, just knowing where things are that really, really helps. I think before we even go into to these questions, one yeah. one important thing I would say is, I'm sorry, but you have to read. Like, yeah, yeah. You have to read. <laughs> a lot of people say, you know, how do I revise for the subject? By reading. Like, yeah, that's yeah, what definitely. It is. Because it's it's not like, so for example, psychology or biology, where you're like learning content or you're memorising the content. No. For English A level, like you have to read. You do, and you have to really think about what you're reading as well and come up with lots of different interpretations because that's where your marks are going to come from. Do you think that spark notes is enough? Because I have... No. No. <laughs> A lot of people no. I know, or the movie, no, you have to read the whole thing. But yeah. I think you can use spark notes to like, if you don't as understand. A start as point. a starting point. Yeah. But don't just rely on it. We're now going to go through some of the questions and there's quite a lot, but we're going to put them into themes and we're going to talk about how we approached uh, each of the themes. So the first one and the most, like, the most important one, the one that everyone keeps talking about is essay and paragraph structure. For me, boy, for, before the essay structure, the essay plan, I know in the exams, it's so, and I had this now even at Cambridge, mm. I try not to waste my time on essay planning because I think we're always going to get marked. Yeah. Did you do essay plans? I did, only like really brief ones. I'd spend a couple of minutes just doing some bullet points at the top of my exam paper just to make sure my thoughts were ordered because there's always the temptation in an exam that you get really nervous and you'll jump straight into it yeah, and then you'll be like, oh me. no. Boy. Shit. Therefore, if you plan your essay structure, it's already there for you. Introduction, I talked about the context. Mm. It, it made it so clear that this was the novel I'm going to talk about or I'm going to compare these two novels they were made at this time the mm. theme is this and I would signpost my my topic sentences I differed between structure form and language and so I like structure compare the two texts language then compare the two texts form compare the two texts mm. and then bring like contextual information and then I would conclude but 
I always, always thought that that structure was a bit messy. So what is your structure? Right, so basically I would always try to integrate analysis of language, form and structure all together in my wow. paragraph. That is why she got an A star <laughs> and I got an A. Um, so basically with my introductions, I would set out every single point that I was going to cover in my essay because then the essay sort of writes itself mm -hmm. and it makes it a bit easier. But the most important thing that examiners want to see is structural analysis because it is the most difficult thing to do. What the hell is structural analysis? So analysis of the text structure, right, okay, how it's structured. Yeah, yeah. So beginnings, endings, whether anything recurs through the text, the relationship between that. So rhyme, if you do it in poetry. I would always have topic sentences. Just a signpost at the very beginning of your paragraph that I'm going to talk about this in this paragraph. And I wouldn't say it in that way, but it's like the structure does does this and then yeah. you'll go on to talk about that you'll elaborate on it evidence so you have to you. be quite brief i mean yeah, not brief, concise is the concise. best but what does that mean that be concise don't be overly ornate with your language just get straight into it yeah i i like to write passively when we look at english literature and when we look at like for example the exemplars that they have on the website they mm. have such fancy language but i think that you can get a's and b's and a's so just you can because if like the good parts come from like the complexity of the points that you're making like obviously you points. need yeah you need technical vocabulary but you don't need to necessarily use loads of big words for no particular reason paragraph structure so peel which i mentioned before that's what we would do i would do a topic sentence make my point um give evidence of my point elaborate my point and then i would give contextual information was it atypical or typical of the context also of the genre and also of the form do you have a certain paragraph structure what i would do is use the topic sentence as i said elaborate evidence and then try to evaluate that's the main thing and that's where you can sort of push it into the a star what does that mean to evaluate? so if you evaluate you're sort of making a judgment of how useful something is we did angela carter's the bloody chamber by the way which is like did. did you do that as well, well? i love yeah, really so obviously that has like quite a lot of feminist themes mm. um, and a lot of the questions that we would have sort of invoke debate. You'll put forward a point but sometimes you can be a bit more forceful and say well clearly she is trying to do this. Yeah, I think so having um, having an argument and then... Yeah, sort of proving your argument and actually mm. having a solid conclusion and not sort of going between two different lines of thought. They don't want you to waffle. Mm. And you know, this it could be this, it could be this, it could be that. Have a point, stick to it. Maybe suggest it could be this. However, reinforce yeah. your original topic sentence and say, actually, bitch, it's this. <laughs> Exactly, that's that. <laughs> HUA, <laughs> sponsor me. <laughs> the next thing we're talking about is timed conditions. Mm. I said, I'm not gonna lie to you. I said, I think I was still rubbish in time conditions. <laughs> really rigid with my time conditions and I stuck to them really well. Like. You'll answer on one text of the first section and then on the second section, we would um, have to answer about all three texts and sort of compare. What, how, the, what kind yeah. of A level is this? <laughs> An evil one. Oh, uh, yeah. Divided the time in half. Oh, okay, yeah. To so dividing, dividing time and practicing as well. My English teacher used to say, if you're not writing, you're not revising. You're I did a lot of practice, practice papers. And do some of them under time conditions yourself. Yeah, as well. that's, that's the best way. The other thing we're talking about is mark schemes. I knew briefly what AO1, AO2, AO3, AO4 was. Yeah. And my teacher made sure that when we do paragraphs, we would cover each one. So, for example, our topic sentence will be like AO1, then our evidence, if we talked about language, form, mm. or structure within the evidence, would be AO2. Yeah. AO3 was talking about critical, critical stuff. So, like, this could be interpreted as, or this has been interpreted, mm. whatever. And AO4 was contextual information. So I try to make sure that I put that in my paragraph. Mm -hmm. How did you deal with Mark's teachers? Um, So I would look at examiner reports and see yeah, what they said that. for each year. Yeah, and they would kind of give direct feedback on what students did well, what they didn't do well. And then sometimes they would include an example of like an example paper. Well, where were you when I did my <laughs> level? The thing we have is, you, how do I use quotation? Quotation. Using <laughs> quotations. Because I knew that my theme was about love. Yeah. So I just looked at text. First of all, I chose a wider reading. That's not even mentioned here, but I did wider reading mm. that could fit so many different forms. If my topic is love through the ages, I would pick text that would cover each topic. So yeah. for example, we would talk about plutonic love, feminal love, like secret love, or those like different themes I would write down, I'd have it all here. Then I would pick one text that covers so many of them. That's a good idea. Because that way, I don't have to read, this is the lazy version. That it's way, lazy, I don't it's have economical. To, it's a good. Ooh, that way, I don't have to read freaking <laughs> a billion times. I just read one. Lelita. We, you've read Nabokov, yeah. Oh my God, that text, although it's very controversial, it just fits everywhere. 
So I just used that and then I just picked one quote that fitted everywhere. Because really and truly, if you just have a quote that almost like implicitly links and then you sort of justify how it links further, mm, then yeah. you're golden. Yeah. And also, worst comes to worst, you're going to slap me. I made up my own quotes. A lot of people did. I was like, Frankenstein said this. Oh, he clearly didn't. In this poem, this happened, boy. How did you try to remember that? Just by reading and reading yeah. and reading. And a, lot, a lot of people use kind of um, flashcards mm. to try and remember them. So they would have the theme on one side and then the quote on the other side and then they'd flick through them. That didn't really help me. I just, <laughs> <laughs> it didn't, but it, it does help some people. Yeah. I just kind of read and read and read. And just remembered. And used them in essays and then kind of it just. That's a good idea. They just sunk in. One thing we're going to talk about is unseen poems or unseen texts. This is what I found. They are not evil. They are evil, but at the same time, they're not the examiners. No. They will give you texts that although you've never seen, that you might not even understand, because I don't understand Shakespearean language. I still to this day don't understand. But they give it to you for a reason. They don't yeah. give you random texts. They give you texts that connect. So even though it's unseen, you're thinking, what the hell is this? Look at the intros and think, okay, what is different and similar? Mm -hmm. Then look at the writing, look at the themes, look at the characters, look at the context. There's always this, there's always things that they give you like on purpose that they want you to look at. Yeah. So although it's unseen, it's not like unheard of. There's gonna be similarities and differences yeah, in yeah. it that they give you for a reason. There is no set answer either, so you'll be credited for what you say as long That's as you true. evidence it properly. Exactly, yeah. There's different <clears throat> routes to getting an A. Yeah, um, there's you, no one answer. There's no so, one answer. Another thing is coursework. What I'll yeah. very quickly say about that is I worked very hard on coursework because I Worth felt doing. that it was sort of backup marks. I know the syllabus has changed for a lot of you. I never knew I could get full marks in my coursework at all, but I literally just spent so much time on it. And yeah. what I did was, is I would have like on my computer, a different web document or different word document for each paragraph. Yeah. So I wouldn't have like my whole essay and scroll through them, have them all there. I would do it separately and I'd put them off. So I'd have like one page, one paragraph, another page, paragraph. And I would mm. like look at them, critique it, does this make sense, is this grammar correct? And I would just spend so much time marking and evaluating my own coursework. Yeah. And making sure, do I have AL1, AL2, AL3, AL4? I spent so much time on my coursework. So did so I. Much time it's it's really, it. really worth it. You might have some evil teachers who don't want to give you the grade. And I don't really have any comments for them. They, I guess I guess they're trying to make you not rely on it too much. Mm. But I personally feel like teachers should give the grade because I think it does yeah. help. But. Somebody asked a question about looking at specific topics and specific themes such as Gothic and Shakespeare. So Shakespeare was really hard because, like I said, I don't understand. I can't even understand English. No, I have to understand his English. So it's just um, crazy. But I think yeah. I looked at translations for Shakespeare. Like a lot of the words, what does die, thou, hide, thou. <laughs> catch me outside what do all of those words mean um, and for gothic literature I just looked at like the iconic sort of um, writers so like Edgar Mary Shelley, kind of Mary Shelley yeah. um, and they just sort of compared them to modern gothic okay. like um, Angela Carter themes of supernatural there's a lot of subversion of like world another thing was critics um, so using sort of other writers in your work mm. and how you could use that to illustrate your point so I hate to be really cliche but I just did like the basic thing. This is what a Marxist would say. This is what a, a feminist would say. This is yeah. what a postmodernist would say. And I sort of use modern writers. So I did a lot of like online work where okay. I would like, for example, Google. So in my English coursework, so this is quite interesting. Mm. So we did a fellow. If you've read a fellow, then you'll understand where I'm coming from. I basically said in a fellow, the reason why Iago is evil is because he had a homosexual attraction to a fellow. Okay. Rah! Let that sink in. Everyone was like, ah? And then I had two teachers. One teacher was like, no. The other teacher was like, yes. And then what I did was I looked online to see if there were any people Critics that agreed with it. Critics kind of the point. There's millions. Going yeah. online really helps. One, like, it gives you points and gives you ideas. But they are critics as well. Also, Freud. Psychoanalytic. Psychoanalytic. Like, what yeah. did he say? But what really helped me with this was when I did a fellow or when I did Angela Carter, you can buy these textbooks. I'll insert a picture now. And these textbooks actually have themes and critics that you could use okay. that I would just copy and they will be based on certain texts. So I had a whole like A-level specific textbook about the Bloody Chamber. Okay, yeah. I don't know one of those. I just, I just Amazon did and it was there. We were told not to worry oh. about any okay. specific critics. Okay. And just to think more about um, sort of critical frameworks that you said. So mm -hmm. 
from a psychoanalytic perspective, and that's really useful with like feminist texts, for example, gothic texts. Because um, there's different types of feminism. Yeah, know, yeah, yeah of course. Radical, yeah, don't because worry about I guess, specific critics too much, as long as you get different interpretations. Then. Yes. So, yeah. I bet, so what you could also say is. In terms of critics, if you do feel like you've made a point, you could also say, however, this could also be interpreted through this perspective. Yeah. And that also comes under AL3. The other thing I'm talking about is analysis. My English teacher always said, whenever you're writing, always think, so what? Writing a sentence, I'm writing a point, so what? Yeah. Have I answered it? So like, for example, point explained. Okay, and? Okay, and? Doing the most, going in depth, but then making sure that it links back. The topic sentence, but yeah. something to avoid is don't use a quotation and then just explain what it means because then you're just sort of retelling the text. Okay. We were always told not to do that, that's a big no. What should you do instead? You you kind of need to say what it infers. It so like means, the subtext. Yeah. You don't that's just you don't just say this means and leave it like that. Mm -hmm. Analysis takes practice. We're gonna talk about general revision tips. So I understand that so hard to revise because you might it think, is. how do I revise? Because you don't know what's going to come up in the exam no. if, it's, if it's closed text or unseen. For my particular exam, a lot of um, for the A21 anyway, a lot of the same questions would come up year on year, but they just reword them. Slightly. How how would you realise that? Though? How would you realise that? Just by looking at different past papers, so comparing past papers, them. Then, yeah. Another general revision tip I would say is to look at exemplar papers. That's really, really helpful. And copy their writing. And another thing we did was kind of like, if you're when you're reading through the exemplar, yeah. go through and say, okay, this much this much is AO1. This is our, how yeah, I can do it. So marking other people's exams. Yeah. yeah. Because you'll see some exemplars which are over the top, which use such fancy language, but you'll see some that you're like. This got full marks. Uh, we actually did that. Like, yeah. This, this. And see how they those can be improved. As well. And like, for example, look at their topic sentences and look at the way they set their introduction and sort of think, can I do that? Maybe even copy some of their phrases and their sentences and just embed it into your own. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. That's Take what from it do. what what you think is good. Another thing I would say is, for example, what we did was terminology, mm. and you would just need to like keep reading and keep thinking like back up terminology. So if I look at this essay and I'm thinking, I have no idea, you're always gonna find imagery. You're always gonna find metaphors. And this is yeah. being really basic, similes and language devices. There's, there's always gonna be something to say about a poem, about the stanzas, about why this sentence is shorter than this, about mm. anamatapapia, what is that word? Anamatapapia. Anamatapia, what is that? If worse comes to worse, think of like, what are the basic analysis that you can always find? What are the basic things that are featured in a poem, in a prose, in a play that you can always use if worse comes to worse. On the other side of that, if you're aiming for like an A star, mm -hmm. do you have any, this will be the last question, do you have any A star revision tips? Because this A is star fun. revision tips. Evaluation, like I said earlier, so kind of try and really reinforce your point and make sure you have a solid argument. Um, really look at structural analysis, so sure. compare openings and endings, do, do they sort of mirror each other? Are they completely different? Is there anything that kind of recurs throughout the text? Is there any pattern that you can recognise? The last thing we want to say before we end the video is we understand that exams are approaching and that A-level English is very hard for some individuals. But one thing that I personally want to stress, and I know Sean does as well, is A-levels is not the end no. of the world. It's, it's really... They're not. <laughs> and I know, I know we, we both get to Cambridge and it's just like, okay, well, you know, obviously, yeah. yeah. Obviously for you guys, you go to Cambridge, it's fine. But like, me and Sean, we didn't get amazing, amazing GCSEs. No. And we did have, you know, there's always factors and extenuating circumstances that happen at home. This is what I would say. As long as you tried your hardest, given your own individual circumstances, yeah. that's all that counts. Definitely. Everyone goes through different things, therefore no one can sort of compare you to A, B and C. As long as you tried your hardest and you had fun while doing so, that's all that that's matters. That's the main thing. If you tried really hard, then you've done the best you can. Whether you get an A, a B or a C, it's really not the end of the world. You worked for it as well. It's yeah. really the end of the you world. You worked hard. It's fine. So guys, we want to say thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for commenting. I want to say a massive thank you to Sean, who has helped. Because listen, this is a queen of English. <laughs> this is the queen of English. We hope you guys enjoy this video. If you do A-level psychology or A-level sociology, make sure to check out my other videos that I've posted. Um, and just again, thank you so much for watching. We love you very much. And we really hope that you've learned from this video some tips.
yeah. that can help you with the A level. Again, thank you so much, and you have to blow the kiss. Mwah! My belly is rumbling for the whole <laughs> video, for God's sake. <laughs>